Welcome to the Ricky Matthews Show from the Citizens Bank Studio. Hope you're having a great day as we continue to celebrate all the amazing people who are making Mississippi so wonderful to work, live, work, and play in. Hey, I've got a couple of uh, quotes that came from my history book over the last couple of days, and um, you know the, it will lead to a quote here. But I found it interesting that John Wilkes Booth was killed 12 days after assassinating President Lincoln back in 1865. Interesting. Uh, let's see. The worst nuclear disaster in history occurred in Chernobyl in 18, excuse me, 1986. Uh, the deadliest tornado in history killed 1,300 people in Bangladesh. I mean, Mississippi's kind of, unfortunately, the capital of tornadoes in America. And unfortunately, uh, we ha fortunately, we haven't had to experience anything like that, for goodness sakes. And Lucille Ball died back in 1989. Lucille Ball, she once said this, knowing what you cannot do is important. Is Excuse me, let me start over. Knowing what you cannot do is more important than knowing what you can do. You know, this is this whole notion as you work toward finding success in your life. I think making mistakes and learning from those mistakes and Finding out what you can't do and accentuating your strengths, I think Lucille Ball is completely right about that. Uh, another quote that came from the history book was from Coretta Scott King. I've shared this many times. And, you know, if there is a, um, if there's a sort of a, an underlying message for this show, it's this quote from Coretta Scott King. The greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the passionate, excuse me, by the compassionate actions of its members. And, you know, we're so lucky in Mississippi, especially here in coastal Mississippi, as a result of what the adversity that we've faced along the way. We, uh, we know about compassionate action, and thank God we have a lot of people who, who act that way. And as a result, I think we have a great set of communities um, as a result of our experiences and watching our compassionate members do what they do to give back to the community. Okay, without any further ado now, let's move, move over to my friend, Dr. Mary Graham, the president of Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, and someone I really enjoy checking in with from time to time. But it's been too long since the last time. Mary, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful, Ricky. How are you doing? And thanks I, for having me on the show. It's been, it's been great. As you pointed out before we started, I've had the opportunity to get to know some of the members of your team between uh, the last time that we talked and, and now. And, you know, it takes a great team to accomplish your goals, doesn't it? It does. And we have an amazing team. We have nine vice presidents um, at each location and running our district office operations. So amazing team. We're very fortunate at Gulf Coast. Great talent. So let's remind people, people who have not heard us talk before, if, if you're a regular listener, you've heard uh, Mary Graham and I talk before, and you certainly have heard me uh, sing the praises of Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, which I think is one of the best community colleges in the entire United States for a lot of good reason. And we'll talk about some of that here in just a second, about the massive work that they've done to listen to stakeholders in the community, especially in the business community, and the work that they've done to move toward non-traditional education. Uh, she told me before we started the, the program that enrollment for the fall is up 11%. That's incredible to hear that. But I'm not surprised because you guys are hitting on a bunch, uh, hitting on a bunch of cylinders. But let's take a step back for a second and just remind people this massive footprint of Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. Sure, I'm glad to do that. Um, we are one of the largest community colleges in Mississippi, and we're proud of that. But more importantly, Ricky, we're proud to be the best community college in Mississippi in terms of quality and the uh, the, the number of students we have and the great facilities we have. We've been very fortunate. We've got great local support. We've got great state support. And I've already mentioned the great people that work here. So um, first and foremost, amazing faculty. Uh, we have some of the best faculty, um, certainly in the state of Mississippi, and I would hold them up to any faculty member in the nation. So all committed. Uh, to doing what I call mission work, because when you teach at the community college, it's more about teaching in your discipline. It's about those wraparound services for our students. And that's why I think our enrollment continues to grow, because if a student, and you've had this experience, I know you've shared the Weta White story, <clears throat> those instructors not only teach, but they really lift students up and wrap their arms around them to make sure 
that from point A to point B, which is graduation, that they have a successful venture throughout, you know, a successful experience. So, um, again, one of the largest community colleges. We now have 11 locations, Ricky, so we're growing. Um, the main locations are in Perkinston, where we have dorms, athletics, you know, all the traditional career and technical and academic. And, of course, our two largest locations, the Harrison County campus and the Jackson County campus. So right now, we're serving over 25,000 students a year in the credit and non-credit realm. Surprisingly, we serve more students on that workforce non-credit side just because we are working hand in hand with business and industry to provide that flexible instructional opportunity for those that need to go to work. So. We're, we're in a good place right now at Gulf Coast. Well, people have heard me th th say this before, but just in a kind of a nutshell, uh, I went to University of Alabama in Birmingham, the paramedic school. I was in pre-med and then made a decision that medicine was not for me. I got a job at Mississippi, Mississippi Power working in the purchasing department and went to Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. That's where I met Weta White, the, the person that she mentioned just a few minutes ago who was involved in Phi Beta Lambda, uh, a business mm -hmm. uh, fraternity there on the campus. And I went on to do you know interesting things with that organization, not only in the state, but in the nation. And then um, you know I met people like TJ Smith who encouraged me to apply for, for scholarships, which I did, and ultimately led to me being able to go to Southern Miss once I left Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College on a full academic scholarship. And uh, Mr. Stamps, who we've talked about before, but all these people who were more than just instructors, people who touched my life at a time when I was, you know, I was trying to decide, you know, where I decided medicine was not going to be for me and mm -hmm. then maybe business. And then they sort of embraced me and helped me see things in myself that I, di that I didn't see in myself. And um, and then went on to do an internship at the Sun Herald, and the rest is history. But you know, I give Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College and my experience there all of the all the credit for helping me turn this corner. Um, and I, you know, I see it. I see you know, if you go through your f Twitter feed, whether it's nursing students or nurses aides, or whether it's you know uh, you know sophisticated diesel mechanic school, whatever it might be, or whether it's just getting a good base foundation of education that someone's going to go on off to uh, you know university later. Um, there's so many stories to tell. The students cover the entire spectrum. And uh, and everyone has their own needs, you know. That it's not right. treat someone the way you want to be treated, but treat them the way they need to be treated. Sort of like the book "Break All the Rules." But you guys understood that, don't you? Understand that, don't you? We do, and you know, we try to meet students where they are, as you have, you know, very eloquently described. Because not everybody needs the same intervention. You know, we have students who have a 36 on the ACT. We have a huge honors program. And we have students who don't have a 36 on the ACT. And so we're able to help them, get them to a point where they're doing college level work. 70% um, of our students are transferring to the university on these amazing scholarships. We've had several uh, qualify for the Jack Kent Cook Scholarship, which is thousands and thousands of dollars to go on and get a master's, a bachelor's and a master's degree. So we are so proud of the fact that we have this huge Phi Theta Kappa organization where students transfer, they get these amazing transfer scholarships. Many are able to pay for their junior and senior year at the university. So um, a lot of our students are on track to go to the university. But again, I don't want to forget about that career and technical piece. We have over 60 different high-tech career and technical programs. So everything from nursing to cybersecurity to artificial intelligence. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing what you can do in two years. And to be honest, a lot of those students are making six figures when they get that two-year degree. So, you know, sometimes I often question the PhD versus a two-year degree in cybersecurity. I mean, the pay scale is pretty comparable. <laughs> so and that, it's it's incredible. <laughs> well, it just shows you how the world is changing. I mean, you know, when I was going to school, it was mostly required to get a four-year, you know, four-year degree. That's just kind of the mold that was there. And of course, I went on to get an MBA and and was glad that I did. I, I didn't want to be in a position where. Someone was saying, okay, it's between Ricky and this other person, and someone say, 
if only Ricky had an MBA, you know, an MBA, or if only Ricky had this experience. So no matter what, I, I, I was always in a position where I was giving, given a lot of challenges in, in my career. And I always said, yes, I don't care what it involved. And once it involved flying 650,000 frequent flyer miles over a two year period, <laughs> there was oh, a, you know, commuting to Miami for a year and a half and to, to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for six months. But, you know, that's what I was willing to do. Mm -hmm. um, but boy, the world has changed today. You know, as you pointed out, your strategic planning, your outreach, your talking to stakeholders, understanding what the needs are in this economy is one of the key reasons for your success. And so when we come back a little bit, we'll talk about the uh, st strategic planning efforts that you've been involved in and what you learn as a result of this ongoing process that you're involved with. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Dr. Mary Graham from Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. We'll see you after this. Welcome back to the Ricky Matthews Show from the Citizens Bank Studio. And I have my friend, and I really do say friend, because Mary Graham and I go back a long, long way. And she's been with uh, Gulf Coast Community College since 1987. That's amazing to think about that. A, um, <laughs> a lot of time has flown by. But she's the president of Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. I think, yeah, I've, I've said many times, one of the best in the in the entire United States. And one of the reasons why they're on the cutting edge is because they pay a lot of attention to their strategic planning process. In other words, they're wanting it, a part of a strategic process planning process is to do a lot of external analysis and listening and knowing who your stakeholders are. Give people a sense of how seriously y'all take that process. Well, we evaluate our strategic plan every three years. It's kind of a rolling plan, if you will. You know, back in the day, back in the in many many years ago, people did these five and ten year plans, Ricky, and it's just not re that's just not realistic to do that anymore. Things change too quickly. I use the analogy of the cell phone versus the flip phone. You know, it wasn't too long ago we all were using the flip phone. You know, someone one of my students said, "You know, the flip phone flip phones are back in style, Doctor Graham." I said, yeah, "Well, they are, but not the ones we used actually." But you know, things and technology changes so quickly that you have to stay ahead of that curve. And so we meet with business and industry. We have advisory councils. We have a big workforce summit every year. Uh, we talk with our faculty so that we can make sure we have a real understanding of what their needs are. But, Ricky, the key has been all of our team and myself included, we're very engaged at the national level. Um, I've had the great opportunity for two different terms to serve on the National Community College Board. I chaired that board at one point, but you're the first to be engaged in the conversation of what's going on nationally. So you take all that great information, you bring it back to Mississippi, and you make things happen here for our local business and industry. And so I feel like that's why Gulf Coast has been so fortunate and so successful, because so many of us are trying to stay ahead of that conversation that's happening happening nationally of creating new programs. We just launched, and you'll be interested in this, we just launched a program called Maine, the Mississippi Artificial Intelligence Network. So we have all 15 community colleges and the universities engaged. We're leading the effort for artificial intelligence training in the state of Mississippi. So it's really kind of a cool initiative. We've got a lot of people engaged. Dell and Intel are the sponsors of this. So those are the kind, that's just one example of the kinds of things we're trying to make sure that we're innovative, we're progressive, and that we're not trying to catch up, but we're trying to get ahead of the curve. <clears throat> I'm not surprised to hear that. And I talk a lot about artif artificial intelligence and where it's headed. And obviously, from a technological point of view, if you're if you're into high tech, teaching high tech, if you're not including artificial intelligence, as ba basically sort of the lead now in the conversation around technology, then you're then you're behind. But you know what's interesting? When I talk to friends in other states, or even friends in other parts of the state. It's not, it, it, you know, you go to the national level and you learn what some of the best practices are doing as it relates to community college systems, but not all community colleges are embracing this more strategic approach. 
I wonder why that is. It seems so obvious and so important to your survival or your ability at least to be able to connect with the community and provide for the community the kind of education the community needs. It, it would seem to me that, I mean, it's hard because that means you've got to embrace change in a big way and you've got to be able to, willing to turn on the dime. I guess some leaders are not willing or able to do that, but it is not a foregone conclusion that every uh, it's, it's community college, and we'll, we'll stick with community college for the time being, are going to just embrace this sort of strategic approach, is it? it you're right about that. Um, I think, you know, it takes a lot of extra work, but our team and, and our faculty, we are so competitive. We want to be the best at everything we do. We're always reaching for that level of excellence. So we want to be better than everybody else. And so in order to do that, you have to get out front. You have to, you know, embrace change. You have to make it happen. You have to provide the resources for that change. I mean, obviously, you can't wear out your faculty and staff by changing things constantly. But the things that matter, you have to be willing to get in there and be innovative and do some things because, number one, our customer is our students. I want our students to get out there and be ahead of the curve when they graduate, not trying to catch up with the rest of, you know, the United States or students in the United States. So, you know, we've had our students shine at the national level, winning all kinds of innovative grants and scholarships. And so the reason we do it is because of our students. We know yeah. that we give them an advanced platform from which to grow. So, it's, you know, it's interesting. It's not just about listening to business and industry and what their needs may be over the next, what you name the years. It's also sort of building into the the framework of the instructors that you have and the people who do the teaching, wh whatever form they come in, sure. that they're going to be on the cutting edge. They're going to be constantly looking. That they're going to, there's a like a continuous improvement portion of the, the university that seems to me to be very critical. It is critical. We launched a few years ago an initiative called Quality Matters so that every one of our instructors are engaged in this training to be the best at what they do. You know, for years, they called it the sage on the stage, you know, traditional instruction, which is not the case anymore. People are, you know, incorporating artificial intelligence they're teaching cybersecurity, and they're doing this in a biology or an English class. I mean, they're using, using atomage tables, which are these 3D dimensional, uh, huge eight-foot tables, you know, for our, um, for our science classes. And we're able to bring those resources in so they can get to understand them and use those tools because those students – when they get out into the real world, they're going to be using those tools. So we're trying to bring those tools into our, and that means our instructors have to learn how to use them. So, um, but you know, they've embraced it and they've engaged it because they know that we put the time and resources into providing that for them. We're yeah. not just going to leave them in the classroom to, you know, get behind the old, you know, PowerPoint. They're going to actually get in and learn to use those resources and become experts at it. So, I think they enjoy teaching more because of it. I, th I think you're right. I mean, you're building a core value into Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, which is about we never arrive. We're, we, we're always looking over the horizon to understand what is it we should be teaching and what are the skill sets that we need to have internally. And that puts pressure on people who are part of the staff now to say, okay, how can I improve my skill sets? How can I be, can continue to be relevant to these conversations? Absolutely. And you know you build you build a great you may build a great community college that way. Hey, listen, when you're doing a college update these days, what what does that look like? The college update for like general public? Yeah, or? When you, yeah. When somebody says, give me give me the top five or six things that are that you're most proud of or that's on your list these days. What what do oh, you, what do you let tell? Let me tell you the one thing that we were just recognized for, and this is a nationwide. Um, award uh, to be the number one uh, provider of military services uh, for students in education. So we're the number number one military friendly school in the United States, not just in Mississippi, in the United States. And then come along beside that, the number one college in the United States to provide services to military spouses. So, you know, we have a huge military footprint on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. And so 
we roll out the red carpet for individuals who have served our country. We feel like it's the right thing to do. Make sure we package their financial aid appropriately. We give them the best course offerings that they can. So that's number one today on my list, you know, that, that things move. Um, we've just been uh, ranked number one cybersecurity efforts. We're working with Keesler Air Force Base and Mississippi State. I mentioned the main effort in artif artificial intelligence. Um, those are some of the big things, but again, we have this amazing board of trustees. Now, I have 23 people that sit on our board who were named by our local supervisors, and they are so open to big, new, innovative ideas. So, you know, everything that's successful at Gulf Coast, I have to brag on our board. They get behind what we're doing, and hey, we don't always get it right. But, you know, I'd like to say at least 90% of the time we're doing some really cool stuff. And so uh, I attribute that to a great board. But, you know, we're growing. Our enrollment's growing. Our faculty are, you know, just amazing. We have great leadership in terms of our executive council. So those are my top five, top ten. I mean, I could go on and on. I don't want to bore you with that. But I do want to tell you that um, our women's basketball team, uh, won state and region and went on to play in the national championship this year. Ricky, they haven't done that since 1977, so I'm super proud of them. Uh, we've got an amazing women's basketball coach. You know, our tennis team is ranked number one nationally. Our golf team is ranked number one nationally. So we're just trying to do some amazing things. So. How are you doing that? Hey, fact, when we come back on the other side, we'll talk about what all the success on the athletic side and how are you doing that? I mean, those are some incredible accomplishments. When we come back on the other side, we'll continue our conversation with Dr. Mary Graham from Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. We'll see you after this break. Welcome back to the Ricky Matthews Show from the Citizens Bank Studio. I have Dr. Mary Graham from Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, the president there. She's been there since 1987, held a bunch of different positions during that time. But she's been a terrific leader of this organization. As she mentioned, a board of trustees of 23 people, that's, that's, a, that's a big board, a lot, lot, of, uh, lot of stakeholders. But, you know, Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College represents a large area, doesn't it? It does. We represent Harrison, Jackson, Stone, and George. And, you know, you always want great diversity on your board in terms of we have superintendents, we have business leaders, you know, we have um, stay-at-home moms. I mean, we have a lot of diversity on our board, which is so important because we want to hear the voice because those are the different groups of people that we serve. Yeah. So we always want to make sure we're, you know, listening and making sure we're doing what we need to do for these constituents. Well, so, so you talked about the women's basketball team and how important this accomplishment was for them, but then you started to rattle off all these other programs that are rated number one. How are you doing that? I mean, come on now. That's that your the competition is intense. How do you get that many programs hitting on that many cylinders? Well, I'll be honest with you. It's it's making sure that you hire the right people. And you know, we try to do that consistently, but we also try to I go back to the resources, making sure the facilities are top notch. And again, I go back to our board of trustees because they've supported us, you know, really making some improvement in our athletic facilities. People don't think that's important, but retention for student athletes is at an all-time high. If you can engage a student in something that they're proud of and that's worth, you know, waking up in the morning, going to breakfast check, practicing all night, those are the things that are important. And students will stay in school if they're affiliated with an athletic program quicker than anything else. So um, I'm so proud when I'm at graduation, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, but to see those athletes walk across the stage because many of them come to us without a lot of opportunity to go, you know, and, and some go on and even play in the NFL. So <laughs> that is really an amazing feat. But the answer to your question, hire the right people, set the expectation high. And as I mentioned already, you know how competitive we are. Um, and provide the resources and the great scholarships. And so all that packaged together. Look, we don't win at everything, but we do try to um, be well represented in almost every sport that we have. So we have 11 sports now. And we added last year eSports, which is a brand new sport. And we have a team at each location. So that's gaming. Um, fun, fun sport. And it's drawn in a whole new 
group of students. And so we love that. You know, it's interesting because people think about Gulf Coast Community College. Uh, you think about football. Football reigned, you know, uh, su supreme for many, 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 many right. years. And that whatever that winning thing is, it just started to kind of translate into these other programs. That's awesome to see, isn't it? It is. We love it. And, you know, football is king always in Mississippi. And, you know, the great thing about a football program is it brings in, you know, 25 cheerleaders. It brings in a Perkett dance team. It brings in a 250-member band of gold. So you have all these affiliate programs that really just make for such a fun, exciting game environment. So we pack the house on football night. So it's always a lot of fun. Hey, so Mary, let's see your end just a little bit on healthcare. Um, you know, it's interesting. During the pandemic, we were short, there were shortages of, of everything. And mm -hmm. you guys have had such a great program. Uh, it really, it cuts across so many different disciplines. But I would say if you, I, it, well, no, actually, let me ask you this question. Um, if you, if you look at your healthcare the, the, the programs that you teach. Um, is that one of the most important programs that you have at Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College? Well, you know, it's hard to say the most important because there's so many different sectors that we're trying to help fill the void, the shortages. It is critical. Healthcare uh, shortages are un at an unbelievable critical shortage right now. And so it is very, very important. And it's a huge enrollment for Gulf Coast Community College. We have multiple programs, radiology, respiratory, medical lab, I mean, you name it, nursing. We have the, you know, the two-year RN program. We have the LPN program. So uh, we're starting dental hygiene this, this upcoming uh, fall. So it is critical, and we are trying to backfill that shortage on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Our focus, and you'll hear me say that, we're competitive at the national level, but our real focus is the four counties are the four counties that we serve. We want to backfill that workforce for our four counties and the, and the industries that work down here. So we want to make sure we're strong for the economy and continue with that economic development. So, yes, health care is critical, as is cybersecurity and as is, you know, uh, any kind of technology program. They're all critical to the foundation of the Mississippi Gulf Coast. So I wouldn't want to put one above the other because – if you're, if you're at Chevron, you're going to say process technology is critical. If you're at Ingalls, you're going to say welding is critical. If you're at Singer River Memorial, you're going to say nursing is critical. So we want to be the, the entity that fills that void for them. Yeah, I have Alan Sutter coming on in the next day or two and uh, from, from Chevron to talk uh, more about this incredibly important refinery, one of the most strategically important refineries in the United States. Absolutely. And then you mentioned Ingalls. You start you start to think about Ingalls' strategic importance to America, you know. And then you move over to the other side, and you start to think about these blue chip industries that are part mm -hmm. of NASA and at Stennis Space Center and the private enterprise and what's happening with, you know, commercial flight and all. There is no shortage of opportunities for Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College to be able to provide educated workforce to all these companies and the companies that support them. Absolutely. It's um, you know you're you're kind of lucky to be here because you've got you've got feedback coming from these organizations that is fundamentally strong and real and this is what we need now. You mentioned Singing River Health System or Memorial Hospital or any any of these. Um, you're lucky, but you got to deliver too, don't you? Right. You have to make sure that you go out, you listen, you 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 garner input. But then you have to come back and take some action and make it happen. So, you know, we are very fortunate to be positioned where we are. We, we talk about being one of the largest community colleges, but we're also the very strong, one of the strongest community colleges because of the business and industry that is in our back, you know, at our back door. If we were, you know, in the northern part of the state or middle part of the state, we would not have the same opportunities that we do down here. And so, you know, we realize the importance and we also, you know, uh, to, to whom much is given, much is expected. And we believe that every day we're trying to make sure we put out those products, which are our students, our graduates, and that they're well trained and that industry can have an opportunity to hire them and be satisfied with the product. 
Yeah, I had a, I've had a, num- a number of conversations with Dr. Joe Paul from Southern Miss, and when you think about when he talks about his strategic plan these days, he talks a lot about this the, the, this kind of workforce development stuff. And um, you know, I think everybody's having the conversation today. You know, some some may be doing better than others. Yeah. And I would say when you think about the work that you guys have done, again, you've been recognized on the national scale. One point about the retirement uh, piece of this. When I talk to people from Keesler or, or you, you, from anywhere, CB base, where, wherever, they, I, I, one after another, when they retire, they stay here, and they they could be from somewhere else. We see when we think about the reti- what retirements are saying about coming to Mississippi. It's some something about the the healthcare, it's the cost of living, that's the, you know, they get connected to the culture, whatever it might be. Mississippi just generally has done a good job, but all these different pieces have to work together to make retirees want to come here and want to stay here once they're here. Um, but boy, when you think about the the military, the military contributions to Mississippi, and how many people come through here, the fact that we're able to draw, they have choices. These people have been all over the world. They could go live anywhere. But they choose to live here. And I think it's partly because of the kind of thing that you're talking about. You, you've got a Gulf Coast Community College that's willing to work with people to say, okay, now that you're out, you know, what are your career aspirations? What are your educational aspirations? How can we work with you? And for you guys to be, to be recognized as the top college, is it college or community college? Community college. Mm-hmm. Community college in the United States. That is a, that is a very significant honor. And it's a recognition of something you guys really believe in, isn't it? Absolutely. And you know the great thing about having Keesler and um, the CB base? We are a lot of their retirees. When people come down here, they retire. Maybe they, they're at Keesler and they retire. We can hire them as really outstanding instructors. And so some of them work part-time, some full-time. What a great resource for us to get these top folks in cybersecurity, you know. So we're very fortunate to have that pool. And again, same thing with Chevron and Ingalls. A lot of their retirees actually teach for us. So yeah. those years of seasoned experience, I mean, you just, there's no comparison. It's incredible. I mean, you know, like Keesler is a training facility. And mm-hmm. you think about it at the CB base, how many of their, how many people come through there and, and are deployed literally around the world? The learning, they're on the cutting edge yep. of just about everything important, both from a militaristic point of view and really from a, you know, they're, they're helping, you know, places like Haiti, for example, you know, to recover from very difficult times. Hey, when we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Dr. Mary Gray, and we'll see you after this. Welcome back to the Ricky Matthews Show from the Citizens Bank Studio. We have Dr. Mary Graham, the president of Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, with us as we go into this final segment. And, um, you know, one of the things that is really important, if you look back over time, the financial side of the picture has always been something that you have really focused on, diversifying the revenue stream. We have the legislative allocations. You've got student enrollment and the fees that they pay. But there's a there's a grant mechanism to this is that's very very important to you as well. Talk to us about what you're doing to try to keep make it affordable for the kids. I'm glad you mentioned that because we do appreciate the legislative appropriation that we get at Gulf Coast Community College, and of course we try to keep our tuition uh, low as low as possible uh, so that students can't afford to come back. And of course they have options for Pell Grant and things like that. But I think the real secret sauce for us is our ability to write grants. Um, we have had banner years where we've gotten, you know, $50 million, but traditionally we're averaging about 50, about $25 million a year in different types of grants. These are grants that we write in coordination with maybe Mississippi State or other universities or at the national and federal level. So we've been very, very successful. Um, One of the challenges that I offer to my executive leadership team is to write grants that is above and beyond their current salary. Many of them do that uh, twofold, threefold, fourfold. Some of them, you know, really do an amazing job. But the important part of the grants, it allows us to offer stipends to faculty 
in those hard to find areas like cybersecurity and any of our IT programs. So we've written some grants to afford stipends to give to them, which enhances their salary and entices them to work at Gulf Coast. And then also, same with nursing, we do some of that. But um, the other grants allow for tuition, and in some of those grants, it covers fees. Uh, I did want to mention, too, a new thing that we're launching this week called Fresh Start. Um, you know, a lot of students have attended college, maybe not had a great experience. Life happens. They may have had to drop out before they completed their degree. So we're offering an opportunity through our foundation scholarships, an opportunity for those students to return to school. Uh, many of them won't qualify for traditional financial aid, but they will qualify for these scholarships. Yes, Mary, I would bet that, you know, you think of it, first of all, I think Fresh Start program is a great idea because there are a lot of people who come out of high school or whatever, maybe they even work for a while and go back to, to get an education, but they're not serious about it, not ready for it. They're facing some challenges in their life. You know, there's a lot of reasons why people may choose to say, wait a minute, this is not good for me, and they go work or whatever they do. But then as they mature and they look back and they say, gosh, man, I wish I had an opportunity to do that over again. But they're worried about, you know, they're worried about lots of things. Sure. Um, you, th to have a program like this, you're going to give people a great second chance. What kind of money are you talking about investing in something like that? We've agreed to close to a half million dollars um, out of our foundation. And, you know, we do a really good job with fundraising through scholarships through our foundation. We have our big gala every year. We actually raised $2 million this year with our gala that we had at the Beau Rivage. So, you know, people jokingly say, you know, I do this, not this, when yeah. I shake their hand. But I am always asking for money. But, you know, that's the role that we play as a college president. We're always trying to fundraise. For the betterment of our students, that's what it's all about. So if you look at $25, $20, 25000000 million in a, in a typical year, and you said that after the pandemic, as much as $50 million, but to typical year, $20, 25000000 million in grant, that's a lot of money. It is. Um, you know, yeah. it, it is. It is. And, you know, resources, stipends, covering tuition and different, you know, types of programs it costs a lot of money. And so if yeah. we want to continue to be innovative, progressive, we have to do the extra work, write the grants, and infuse that additional money into our institution. Yeah, I think it's also cool that you're making grant writers out of your key people. Um, <laughs> I think that's really important because, you know, they have to learn to administer it. They have to learn to ask for it. They have to find it. You know, right. where, where are these opportunities at? Mm -hmm. and, the, and the more engaged and the more competitive they are one another, the more opportunity you have to bring in the kind of money that's going to make something like Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College affordable. And I say kids, but the average age these days is much older than it used to be. So the reality is you've got a wide range of, of uh, people there, don't you? Absolutely. And they all come from diverse backgrounds. They may have a family at home. They may be single. You know, you never know what their circumstance, you know, I go back to what I said earlier. We have to meet people where they are. And a lot of times financially, people may not be in a great place but they really need that education to get them to the next level. So we're working really hard to make sure that we put their financial aid package together if they need it. Everybody's thinking about how to get how to get a great education, whether it means going off, you know, going to Gulf Coast Community College for a year or two and then going on to a university or whether it means the the job training that you guys are doing that we talked about. The opportunities are, I mean, just run the spectrum. And affordability is always going to be a big part of that conversation, isn't it? It is. And, you know, we try to retain an average tuition. We're not higher than others. We're not, I mean, we're not um, as high as some. We're not lower than some. We're right in the middle. We try to, you know, retain that average. But we also say we've got a lot of scholarship opportunities. If you want to go to college, nine times out of ten, we can find you a scholarship. Well, keep up the great work. It's been a pleasure to catch up with you and continue to see the, the great work that you're doing and the national accolades and all the work that you're doing to serve your students, because at the end of the day, that's what you do. Mary Graham, it's been a pleasure to catch up with you, my friend. Thank you so much. Keep inviting us back. You bet. I, can. I look forward to, to spending more time with your team. This has been Mary Graham, Dr. Mary Graham from the uh, president of Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. Have a great day, and we will see you tomorrow. You as well. Thanks.